it's the Leica M10R. Holy crap. This is super exciting for me because this is actually the first Leica I've ever shot in my whole life. It's actually the first Leica I've ever held in my hands. So my goal today is to see if the Leica name lives up to the hype. There's a ton of hype around Leica. It's because of its just very, very, very strong cult following. But it's interesting to me to see if, you know, the images you get from this camera are worth the money that this camera costs. It's a very expensive one. So I will be giving my final thoughts at the end of the video. Because this may be the only time I ever shoot Leica in my whole life, I wanted to shoot something a little different and a little extra special. I just recently moved to Portland, Oregon, and I've been interested in meeting other creators in the area, and I was connected with a music merchandising graphic designer, Cal, and they are so incredibly talented. They have worked with clients such as Foo Fighters, Remy Wolf, and so many more. So instead of your average camera review, I basically wanted to put the Leica M10R into a real life situation. So I treated this like I was interviewing Cal for an artist vignette, so to speak, and I of course did a portrait photo session with the Leica M10R just to see the workflow, how fast the camera works, and of course to see how the images turned out. And I really wanted to get into Kel's process of how they create and what kind of advice they have for young creatives. So let's get into it. So I grew up as an artist and my mom is like an environmental planner and my dad is in construction. So, you know, they both kind of like studied very like science-y practical stuff. My older sister is an aerospace engineer. And so having an older sister who's a rocket scientist, <laughs> kind of like, you know, you kind of grow up in like the shadow of like, oh yeah, my sister launches things in the space. Cool. Um, and I was always really artsy, like as a kid and, um, not that my parents didn't encourage it, but it was kind of like, okay, art's cool, but you know, you gotta study something in school that's like really practical and you can like make money off of. And so I wanted to be a veterinarian like my whole life, all through high school and my senior year of high school, my art teacher who I had all through high school sat me down and was like, I think you're making a mistake because um, I wanted, like, I applied to, like, all these schools and didn't get into nearly as many as, like, I had wanted to. As much as I love animals, I'm not veterinarian material. And so I convinced my parents to let me go to FITA, and I originally majored in fashion design. I ended up changing my major after a quarter, and I switched it to graphic design because I had a roommate who was in graphic design, and I was like, that looks like so much fun. I'd much rather be doing that than, like, constructing bodices, like, so boring. <laughs> so then I studied graphic design and it was like one of the best decisions I ever made because it felt very natural to like just what I wanted. And, you know, it, I fell into designing merch after years of like bouncing around between different design agencies. I worked in-house at like some companies doing like just design in-house or I was doing like content creation for a while just to like kind of figure it out and just mostly just to like keep paying my bills. And then I ended up getting a job at Live Nation, which like complete 180 in my career. And it kind of landed me in merchandise design now. So that's how I got here. <laughs> okay, let's do a, uh, hmm. What else? I like the chair. Let's do one more pose with the chair. Um, yep, yep. Let's straighten it up. She's on a bit of an angle. Perfect. I almost want, yeah, I almost want like it hanging. It probably feels weird, but it looks pretty cool. Ooh, do that. Yeah. Yeah, that looks cool. That's great. Yeah, that's great, huh? Like this. Mm 
right at me, one, two, three. Beautiful. Okay, I feel good about that. A lot of my stuff comes from music, so I, and I know now it's called synesthesia. At the time when I was younger, I didn't know there was like a correlation between it. It's just like when two senses cross. And so like with me, it's like audio and visual. So like weird things have colors to me. So like listening to music is, you know, it's really powerful in like how I create, which is really great for like merchandise design because I can listen to an artist and really get like a feel for like what that music visually represents. And so I'm just constantly listening to music. I listen to music too loud. And it's just how I, how I create. And it's just like, I just see it in my head. And then like outside of that, like someone I was exposed to pretty young is Paula Cher, which like, she's very popular now, which is awesome. But she's a type designer in New York City. And she kind of like, was really like an early pioneer of really crazy type and she designed a ton of like Broadway coasters in like the 80s and 90s, like peak crazy Broadway. And she just like has a really great eye for insane typography. And I really personally enjoy type. It's like one of my favorite things to just like work on on a project. And so she had like a pretty big impact on me, like especially when I was like early in school, I learned about her and I was like, you are so awesome. Stay there. Open on three, one, two, three. Yes, that is beautiful. Yep. So good, bring it close. Right there. What I've started to adopt, and this is part of like my personal philosophy of killing the cop in your head, and so like everyone has like this weird like cop mentality of kind of like over policing ourselves and over policing other people and kind of like how we decide like you know like where other boundaries are and for us personally as designers like you don't own anything nothing is 100 percent original we are like sponges. We absorb everything around us. And anyone who says otherwise is a liar. <laughs> um, and we take so many inspirations from just like other people, you know, music, places, whatever it may be. Everyone's taking inspiration. And like, obviously some people are truly like pioneers in styles, but it all comes from somewhere else. And so I think letting that guard down a little bit you know, kind of lets the pretentiousness off of the community, you know, a little bit more, especially for young people. Like young people are so terrified to enter the design industry because it is so intimidating. And especially people who like are non-men or are not white or are not straight, like it's all of those barriers, like it's just an additional step that you have to break through just to even like share work online comfortably because people are just so afraid of like the toxicity and so just like letting go of that, like come, come back down to earth a little bit, you know, like we're, we're a community where we rely on one another. So you can just like step and swing. Yep. I'm gonna step and swing just for a second. And let me get my focus. Okay, ready, go. Yes, yes, yes. So good. I do like the sound of the shutter. Can you guys hear it? Very nice. Oh, so good. Okay, I want you to do that same thing, but towards me. So you're gonna swing the leg towards me, basically. Yep. That's perfect. Let me pull focus real quick. All right, ready? Here we go. Yep. Mm-hmm. Cool. Let me see if I got any of those. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, so fun. I think a part of social media that I don't enjoy is how we really compare ourselves to people online. 
and that comes with like the career side too like we see people who like and it's tough with me because I started very young in the industry which is like one of my regrets is that I started working full-time when I had just turned 20 at an agency and you there's a lot of like baptism by fire that happens when you're so young that like when you compare yourself to people who like started at different points in their life like people who started when they were in high school like I get people who DM me who are like 14 and worrying about what they're going to put in their college portfolio and I'm like relax a little bit like no, it's not a rush there's no race there's there's always work like there's always creative projects that you're going to be able to work on like there's no race to the end and so that's one thing is that don't compare people by like age really dangerous uh and the second thing is that like it it's gonna be really hard some days like i almost quit my career like three or four times like i was like that's it i'm gonna become a florist i almost did a full 180 to becoming a florist and it's you just have to keep going and you're not going to always get to do work that you like and one day you might be able to get to do that work that you like but it's going to be really hard some days but that's part of it and you can make it through um and try to find like people that you can like honestly talk to like as a creative like it's hard to talk to your parents about like stuff like this versus like talking to like people who really understand the space and kind of you know be a bit of a mentor to you I think that's really important. So just find people that you can be honest with and have those tough conversations about like career stuff because it's hard, especially like as a creator, it's very different from like being an accountant, <laughs> I guess. Well, if you like keep layering. My name is Kel, I'm based here in Portland, Oregon, and I'm a graphic designer who specializes in user merchandise. All right, so my final thoughts about the M10R. I am, of course, impressed with the sensor that this camera has. It is a 40 megapixel sensor, so you're going to get very high quality images, and I would hope so for a uh, you know, $6,500 camera body. Uh, the sensor is huge and you can definitely see that. The next thing I want to mention is this camera is a rangefinder, so it's not necessarily a pro or a con. Uh, it more so just comes down to what you're used to. I am definitely not used to shooting rangefinders by any means, so I felt like I was shooting quite slow. Uh, it took me a while to pull focus and then compose. Uh, it, you know, it just is a different workflow than I'm used to, but again, it's not a good or bad thing necessarily. I will say I was very grateful for the very large and very bright viewfinder on the back of the camera. This was a huge element that helped me pull focus. I really appreciated uh, that big large screen. I used focus peaking so I could see what was in and out of focus very easily. Another big takeaway is just how tiny this camera is. I mean, if you see it in someone's hands, it, it is very, very small and very compact, but it is so hefty. Um, it is very clear why Leicas last so long. They are very durable. It feels very expensive. Um, I was actually a little bit uh, taken aback at how just kind of meaty this camera is when it's actually in your hands, yet it is so, so tiny. So I sort of notoriously shoot really shallow, especially when I'm shooting portraits and especially when I'm shooting digital. So I shot all of these really shallow. I don't think I ever went over F2. I shot on both the 35 and 50 M series lenses and they both did a lovely job. Um, as you can see here, 
the parts that are in focus are very sharp and the bokeh ends up being really nice and creamy and really beautiful. One of the things that initially struck me and I was really impressed with was just the unedited images. The colors were really, really, really nice uh, just without touching them up at all. So I'll show you some unedited images here so you can get a feel for the Leica color system. They were really pleasant to edit. Uh, there was a lot of latitude and the dynamic range also is really incredible on this camera. It's one of the big kind of selling points and that that showed. To be honest with you, I don't have any complaints. My biggest complaint coming back from the shoot was just how slow I felt like I was and that is not the camera's fault. That is just because I am not used to a rangefinder system. So, uh, you know, pulling focus and then composing and it just took a lot longer than I'm used to. Uh, but again, that is not the camera's fault at all. I really don't have anything bad to say about the camera at this point. Uh, the shoot went really smoothly and I am so happy with the images we walked away with. That is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, go give Kel a follow. They are amazing and I think you might really enjoy their YouTube channel as well. Just so much raw talent and uh, just a joy to be around. So thank you for watching. Have a good day. Keep washing your hands. You know. See you later.